we're good at what we do and yeah. you have to hold on to that too. Hey there, my name is Kurt Mega. I'm an actor, director, and producer. And every single month over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Kurt I bring friends and collaborators on to talk about the creative process. Dominic and I have known each other for years. He's one of my dearest friends. We worked together on the show Glee. He played Warbler Trent, famously uh, embroiled in Scandal. And uh, we've gotten to perform together over the years, doing concerts and projects. I've brought him on to a lot of the stuff that I've made. I love Dom so much. And in this particular clip, we're talking about the idea of of creativity not being limited to where you live. You don't have to live in Los Angeles or New York to be able to be creative and to be an artist. You can do it from anywhere. Check out this clip and let me know what you think. You know, I know when you moved to Denver, uh, what, uh, six, six, uh, five years ago? God, six years ago, six years ago. I know that was kind of one of your concerns. I mean, although you're moving there for a wonderful reason, you know, am I losing touch with this side of my, as far as being an actor, performer? Yeah. Um, and I feel like one of the things that COVID did is it kind of blew the doors off of that a little bit. And it said, hey, you know what? <laughs> it really doesn't matter where you're at. As long as you, you can need, get... Yeah. If you can get somewhere within two to three days, you're good. And you're so I'm sad. curious, looking at your life now, um, although I know recently you actually have been sort of, you've just recently signed with another with an agent thanks, here. If thanks, I... to a, thanks to a certain friend of, of mine. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, yeah. No, thanks to your own talent. Um, oh, you're very kind. You're very but, kind. But, you know, and now with like, you know, Riker moving to, to back to Denver and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I'm curious. Like, what is what does that feel like now in this like new kind of stage where you, it's not a I got to be in L.A. I got to be. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Like, it, it, are you feeling kind of a, a freedom to this? I mean, yeah, it's been a nice kind of like random happenstance that kind of came out of COVID, right? I mean, again, I hate to say that there were pluses to this, but for actors, there there were not in the in the beginning because so many people lost their jobs so many people were like really struggling couldn't meet insurance quotas couldn't do yeah. xyz right i mean it was really tough so it's i took a leap out here for love and i just happened to get lucky if you will in the sense that like you said the casting industry and the film industry the doors have just been blown wide open not only blown wide open in a way that like Casting is so very, like, it's so widely different now. It's not just white people playing every ethnicity anymore. You're getting yeah. so much, so much inclusivity happening. Not as much as there should be still, but it is happening. You record yourself. You don't have to memorize the entire script. You memorize it in blips now because you're, you're recording each scene in its own it's an it's an interesting new world. Oh, so, so I had this ahead. weird kind of experience when it first when it first happened. This is the way things happen now, and I really resented it. And then yeah. I don't know, maybe about a year into it, I started having a lot of fun with it because I, it started being like something new to do when I when I wasn't yeah. doing anything else. And then in the last like year, I've just like gotten completely over the top with all of the tapes that I do. I mean, I have just. Yeah thrown caution to the wind but you it know, got, got you booked didn't it in my room and i think what's been really liberating about that on a bigger perspective just speaking creatively is that you know outside of the industry which is you know not that particularly interesting but it, it is sort of this thing of like oh right we're artists oh right like i'm not just a a, a monkey who's supposed to just show up and do another thing. like space in the line of hangers that come through it's not yeah. you know yeah we're not a conveyor belt of people like we have our own ideas of how things should work you know auditioning from home and then things like you you, you like Riker moving back to Denver you living in Denver Kim and I have been able to travel a lot more it's just kind of been like right like I this is a thing that I choose to do and yeah. I and I'm I am an artist when I do it as opposed to like I'm here in this city just waiting for someone to allow me the, the permit to give me permission to you know I, I don't know it, to open that it. door for you yeah, yeah it's true it's true and 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 I think it also takes pressure off and correct me if I'm wrong because I don't live there anymore but I feel like it would take pressure off of living in LA and walking around and just being who you are instead of always being on thinking yeah. that the person sitting next to you at dinner is a producer of some next big movie or or if I'm walking down the street, I've heard the story of people being like, ah, oh, it's you. I need you for this movie. So you're always on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas like I was able to kind of take a breath here, both literally and figuratively, because the air is much cleaner. The air is clean. But it's yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it's grounding experience to kind of let go of what you thought your entire being was and and give it a go doing something else. And it's not necessarily something that's like pleasant. I, I'm not saying that I've had like the best time in Denver working and do it, but I've, I've taught kindergarten since then. I've 
worked as an assistant director at a at like an early childhood center. And now I'm running an Airbnb. Like things are all very vastly different, but I'm still figuring out what, what works for me and how I, how I operate. I just, like I said, I feel like I got lucky with the way that the industry is now working. Cause I can yeah. do what I do here and I can also audition. And, and, and if think- I'm right for something, then I, then I have an opportunity and I don't have to be there to be right for it. I think it's a beautiful thing is that, I don't know. I, I guess if you had asked me 10 years ago, I think I probably would have had a different answer of totally. like, what, what, you know, what is your purpose of existence? And it's like to, to be an actor, to be an actor. Yeah. And, so, and uh, I, I still love it. I still probably love it more than ever. I mean, I still haven't given up yet. <laughs> no, uh, for better, you're, good, for worse. At it. you're but, good at it. I mean, that's the thing you have to remember. Like we, we weren't, people can say we lucked into whatever, but like, we're good at what we do and yeah. you have to hold on to that too. But there's this other side of, of existence that is like, there's like life out there. Yeah. There's other experiences and there's other things. And, I, you know, I tell you what it is. I think it's this, this notion that I think is completely wrong and completely false. And that is you have to make all of your money at your craft. Yeah. And I theorize that perhaps making money at your craft might be like the thing that taints it. I mean, listen, it's nice yeah. to get I want to get paid. No, of course. Yeah. It's always wonderful. (laughs) But this idea that I've struggled with this and I don't know if you felt this at all either, where you like went and did another job or worked another profession where you're like, Oh, I'm not really a thing. You know, it's like, and I did the same thing. I started coaching. I started teaching. I started doing editing and, 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 you know, other skills that I tried to cultivate just to pay the bills. But what I discovered is I actually found a lot of joy in those things. And I really didn't think I would. And then I was like, no, you're not finding joy. You're just lying to yourself to make yourself feel better for not making it. And I, I had that in my head for a long time. And I was like, actually, yeah. no, I really enjoy. Turns out I love making videos behind a camera. Yeah. The whole experience of the last two and a half years a- allowed a lot of us to sort of have that reflection and go, I'm a real person because everything was taken from a bit for a bit, yeah. you know, that thankfully not our, our health and our lives. I know. It, and it was for a lot of people, but, yeah. but in the sense of everything that we thought we were, or we could do and, and realizing like, I'm a whole person outside of acting or auditioning or, or whatever it is I'm supposed to be. And I think it's yeah. weird. You and I coming from the experience that we have being around that so intimately when we first started out professionally yeah, and that show being at the height. And then I think it, in my opinion, kind of set me up for these expectations of what my life was supposed to look like. 100%. If you enjoyed that clip, you can check out the full conversation over at my Patreon at patreon.com slash Kurt Mega. Every single month, I bring on a friend, collaborator, artist. We talk about the creative process. We talk about the projects we've made together. It's a great conversation. And your support as a patron helps me keep making stuff. And hey, if you're here and you haven't subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll like the kind of stuff I post here. So subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts about this conversation in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.